Okay, today I want to discuss a new study that came out about creatine. Uh, this might be of interest to those of you who use creatine or are considering using creatine. Uh, by now, I'm sure just about everybody watching this video knows what creatine is. Basically, a byproduct of uh, amino acid metabolism. It's synthesized in the body from three amino acids, glycine, methionine, and arginine. Your body produces one gram a day, and uh, usually uh, most people, if they eat meat and fish, they get another gram out of foods. Creatine uh, supplements uh, were actually hit the market heavily in the 90s, in the early 90s, after some studies came out showing that it could increase uh, athletic performance. However, it was used before that as far back as the early 60s by the uh, Soviets uh, or the Russians and the East Germans who gave athletes vials of creatine phosphate before athletic competition so it's been known to increase athletic ability for years creatine works by acting as a backup to the synthesis of adenosine triphosphate or ATP which is the most elemental source of energy in the body all foods protein fats carbohydrates eventually they are converted uh, in, in terms of energy into ATP this occurs in a portion of the cell called the mitochondria. The problem with ATP is it only lasts about six to eight seconds, uh, so it needs to be backed up, and this is where creatine comes in. Ninety-five percent of the of the creatine in the body is stored in muscles. Uh, without getting overly technical, let me put say that creatine acts as a kind of second battery. Uh, it contributes phosphate uh, when uh, a, uh, ATP produces energy by releasing one of its uh, phosphates. Uh, it has three phosphate bonds. When one of them is released, that produces energy, and it leaves you with adenosine diphosphate. Now, creatine steps in and contributes a, the missing phosphate from ATP, and it regenerates it back to AT, from ADP back to ATP. I know this is a little technical, but I just wanted to give you an overview of exactly how creatine works. However, creatine has been associated with several other things including muscular hypertrophy or size gains. Uh, it also acts as a buffer. In other words, it can soak up some acid muscle. And if you add it all together, oh, uh, needless to say, I left out one thing that's not really related to athletics. This is a, a emerging science indicates that creatine has a couple of uh, uses in neuro treating several neuromuscular diseases. Uh, creatine, uh, uh, there's one intriguing study a couple of years ago that showed if you uh, don't get enough sleep, if you ingest uh, a dose of creatine, it will uh, kind of keep you uh, alert or kind of more or less neutralize some of the effects of bad sleep. Although I wouldn't recommend not going out, not going without sleep for any extended periods. It's one of the worst things you could do for your health. But anyway, uh, creatine associated with muscle hypertrophy, uh, creatine stimulates uh, a, a uh, process in cells called cell volume. It increases the amount of fluid in cells. It's a, an osmotic effect. When cells are replete with uh, water or they hydrated, they tend to give out anabolic signals as opposed to catabolic signals. This includes activation of uh, stem cells in muscle called satellite cells. Satellite cells are involved in the muscle hypertrophy process and the muscle repair process. So, you know, without further ado, uh, oh, let me just basically uh, also, I know I've said this in other videos, but just for those of you who don't know, uh, there's several ways suggested to uh, uh, use creatine as a supplement. One involves what's called a creatine load, where you take about 5 grams, which is 1 teaspoon of creatine, anywhere from 5 to 6 times a day for 6 days a week, and at the end of the week, your muscles will be loaded with creatine. The other way is just to take 1 teaspoon a day of 5 grams. And if you take it every day for 30 days, your muscles will be equally loaded with creatine. When you do the creatine load, studies have shown that after two days, over 50% of the creatine that you're ingested is simply broken down into the waste product of creatine, creatine known as creatinine and excreted out of the body. So the creatine load, to me, I think it's kind of a waste of time. It's a waste of money. I would just suggest taking one teaspoon of creatine a day in 30 days, your muscles will be loaded. Now, what this study, this is a new study uh, that I wanted to discuss. It's in a journal called Nutrition Health, kind of an obscure journal. 
The title is Creatine Supplementation Elicits Greater Muscle Hypertrophy in Upper Than Lower Limbs and Trunk in Resistance Trained Men. Now, the reason I wanted to, this study has several features that make it useful. For one, the subjects involved are, are young men with resistance training experience. The problem with a lot of science studies that you come across is that they use untrained subjects, usually untrained college students. Unfortunately, the results obtained from these studies of untrained people are not really relevant in most aspects to those with more training experience. They're more like a, an idea or a, a hypothesis. They don't really apply to those with more training experience. This study, however, did involve uh, young men with training experience uh, in their late 20s. Uh, now, what they did is uh, they gave them, uh, they divided these men up into, uh, uh, some of them took a creatine load. They took uh, creatine for seven days, four doses of 0 0.3 grams per kilogram. That's about uh, five grams uh, per dose. And they took it for, uh, they took this for, uh, and then they took a maintenance phase, seven weeks, single dose, which came out to about three grams a day. Uh, and they also trained during the same period. Uh, this is like seven weeks. It's an eight, I'm sorry, this whole, the, study, the, the study was eight weeks total. And uh, they, uh, the study, uh, they, the men also engaged in weight training four times a week doing upper and lower body exercises. Uh, now, what the study showed was that, uh, and this has been shown in a past study also, uh, for some reason, creatine seemed to stimulate muscle growth. I should say creatine supplementation appears to stimulate muscle growth uh, to a greater degree in upper body muscles compared to lower body muscles. Now, why is that? Very simple. The uh, creatine tends to concentrate in what they call fast twitch muscles. There are two main types of muscle fibers. One is slow twitch, we're also called endurance fibers. The other are called fast twitch fibers. Fast twitch fibers are more prone to muscular hypertrophy, and it turns out that when you ingest creatine, they tend to concentrate in fast twitch fibers, which is also related to why creatine seems to promote muscle growth gains. Now, in this study, uh, the uh, the creatine stimulated much more, not much more, but a greater amount of muscle growth in the upper body compared to the lower body, simply because there are a greater abundance of fast twitch fibers in the upper body, and in the upper body. When you, when you do an upper body exercise, you're training more muscle. In other words, you're, for example, when you're training your chest, you're also training your shoulders. You're training your triceps. Uh, when you train your back, you're training your biceps. In other words, these muscles are being worked. And, and because of that, there's more creatine being deposited in the muscles. Now, the lo lower body muscles uh, do, do contain fast twitch muscles, but they also contain slow twitch muscles. In fact, some studies have shown that you know, if you really want your legs to grow, you would actually be better off doing, concentrating on higher reps for legs, up to 15 to 20 reps when you're doing your leg exercises because they respond better to higher reps. So uh, basically that's the results of the study. Uh, what's the practical points? Nothing really, uh, except that uh, you know, creatine will tend to uh, stimulate muscle growth in the upper body a little bit more, especially in advanced people, a little bit more than the lower body. But it doesn't mean it doesn't help lower body exercise also because there are, again, fast twitch fibers in your legs your, and your lower body, and the creatine will help that, but just not as much as the upper body for the reasons I stated. So that's about it for this particular subject. Uh, one thing I would add, uh, and I've said this in past videos, um, when you purchase creatine, stick with the original creatine, creatine monohydrate. Nearly all the research that has been published on creatine has involved creatine monohydrate. There are many different kinds of creatine being offered right now on the market. The, uh, creatine ethyl ester, creatine nitrate, creatine uh, whatever, uh, hi hydrochloride. There's dozens of them. And the truth of the matter is, they're a lot more expensive than creatine monohydrate, but they offer no real advantages. Save your money, buy creatine monohydrate. Don't bother with the creatine load. Take one teaspoon a day. In 30 days, your muscles will be loaded with creatine. Uh, you can take creatine all year round if you want. However, I would suggest taking creatine for about eight weeks or two months and then get off it for about a month and then get back on it. And the reason I suggest this is that, uh, you know, 
I, I, this is something called the creatine transport protein uh, that might work a little bit better if you uh, get off creatine for a while and then get back on it after a couple of weeks. And it takes four weeks to clear out the creatine that's been loaded in your muscles. So getting off creatine for about a month is all you need. So again, that's it for this particular video. If you want more information about supplements, I mean the latest in-depth information supplements, exercise science, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that work, ergogenic aids, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It incorporates all my 55 years of, of training and studying exper uh, experience. It's, it's, it's in every issue. Each, issue. each issue is 40 to 50 pages, no ads, solid information. Uh, I'm only trying to give you the truth. I'm not trying to sell you anything other than information. Thirty-three. It costs 33 cents a day cheaper than any newspaper, and you will learn a lot more. I promise you, I guarantee it, no matter what your level of, of education. Applied Metabolics is the best source of information everywhere. I wrote for magazines for about 15 years. I couldn't, I, I couldn't always write what I wanted to. In this newsletter, I'm, I'm letting it all out. I'm telling you the whole truth. I'm not aligned with any supplement companies. I have no access to grind. I just wanted uh, to give you a, a source of truth, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Right now, I have one dog, Bruno. He's a senior dog. He's about 14. He's right away. He's a couple of feet. He's always near me. He's a couple of feet away, lying on my couch. And uh, you know, my dog Chip sadly died on October 11th from cancer. You guys might have heard of Chip barking in past videos. I, I miss him terribly. Uh, I'm probably going to foster some dogs pretty soon because uh, I, I want to save as many dogs as I can. I want to do whatever I can to help animals in any small way I can. I'm going to do it. Anyway, take care. Thank you for listening.